<laughs> I am having a hard time starting this video. Um, I have a lot of things on my mind that I just want to ramble about. I know that none of the other talking videos got uh, many views, and that's fine. Um, but I, I just, I have things that I want to talk about, and I would really appreciate some feedback on. So, I don't know. Okay, so I, I tend to I tend to draw parallels with uh, with other people, um, some that I've never met, uh, to my life, and I think a big part of that is that it's really hard when you're uh, mentally ill or depressed or in a bad situation or a bad place in your life it is really hard to get good advice. There's lots of people who have advice, there's lots of people who have stuff that has worked for them, but might not work for you, or for me, for that matter. So, yeah, it's it's been difficult, and I <laughs> just realized I am probably covered in soot from work. Anyway, but I was listening to my favorite band, Frightened Rabbit, and uh, there, there was this, you know, cute little song, and it's called Snake, and it's, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's nice, it's cute, um, and it, it was just a silly, silly love song, kinda, and it was talking about him, uh, visiting his, the woman he loves, you know, traveling across the world to see her in New York, um, which he did edit, failed spectacularly, um, which, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> writing a silly love song, traveling a far distance only to be rejected, that is literally right up my alley, so, yeah. Um, but it has a, it has a weird context, because, uh, the lead singer of Frightened Rabbit actually committed suicide. I'm not entirely sure when, but I'm pretty sure it was before I started listening to them, I, I didn't know when I started listening to Frightened Rabbit um, that the lead singer had committed suicide. Um, I actually enjoyed them for a good couple years there. I had first heard them from a show called Chuck, which used to be on Netflix. Anyway, um, but yeah, and when I learned, learned about it, I felt kind of weird and kind of sad, but mo mostly weird because like, I, I had spent all that time sort of identifying with his, with his, with his music, with his lyrics, um, and I think that's by design, like, he, he makes lyrics that are often not super steeped in metaphor, but still relatable, which I, I think is the sweet spot where it's not generic, but it's not, you know, obfuscated in metaphor, it's realistic, but it's still relatable, I think that ticks all the boxes for me. Um, Anyway, uh, and, and it just, it got me thinking, because I am a depressed person, I um, suffer from suicidal thoughts pretty much every day, um, and most days, regardless of what happens, I, I don't want to wake up, I just, I, I don't want to be alive. Sorry, I, I hope, I genuinely hope that that's not scaring anyone. Um, because I've spent my whole life pretty much like this. Um, duh. Anyway, what, what I was trying to say is it got me thinking about the life that he had and the people that he impacted before his passing. And it got me thinking about his accomplishments and like he, he made all this wonderful, amazing music. Um, and he was so tortured. And I don't mean that in, in a torture, tortured artist makes his music more beautiful. I, I, I don't buy that. Um, but I think, because then everybody, every depressed person would be selling platinum, but it's just not the case. Um, yeah, I, I don't think my music is good. Um, and there were a couple lines that very much indicated he didn't think his music was good either. Oh man, and so I'm, I'm drawing all these parallels and I'm thinking what kind of a life did he have? Be because the selfish thought is what, what the hell kind of a life can I have? 
just me as a suicidal person. Let's just take the thought that maybe one day I might kill myself. Because, let's be honest, it's a possibility. Um, who, who can I allow to be close to me? Because anyone that I allow to be close to me, um, intimate with me, physically, emotionally, uh, platonically, it, it, I just don't want to hurt people the way that Dwayne hurt me. And I can't stop being suicidal. That's not how it works, unfortunately. I'd love to just be okay. But despite all my efforts in getting healthier and getting a better job and trying to accomplish goals and dreams and write so much music and I have so many, I still have so many ideas teeming in my head that I have to get out before I go, but there was, there was a line from one of Frightened Rabbit's songs and it said, I think I'll save suicide for another day. And as the song went on, it got a little longer and a little longer. I think I'll save suicide for another month and then another year. And I think he wrote that because he felt like he was on the uphill climb, like he was getting better. But I think it all caught up with him eventually. And so I'm just thinking, same thing, the very least could happen to me, and most of me thinks that it, it will. It's just a matter of when. And if, I, if I'm going to kill myself, I don't want to leave someone emotionally wrecked for the rest of their lives because I loved them. But at the same time, when I went to California, I'm not gonna lie, it was to distance myself from everyone that loved me and eventually die. Like, I wanted to, I wanted nobody to care about me so that when I passed, wouldn't mean a damn thing. And I couldn't live like that. I couldn't exist long enough like that. I, I needed people, and I ended up mattering more to, to more to people down there than I ever thought I would or could. And and coming back home actually made them sad. I, I so I don't know. So I guess. I'm, I'm trying to think about the life that I want to have now. Like, do I want to go all in, try to have a good life, try to have loved ones and a family that knowing full well that that mental illness might catch up with me and I might one day leave them behind. Food for thought.